Isaiah, chapters 22 through 26. The word of the valley of Sion. What has happened to thee, that now ye are all gone up to the housetops which help you not? The city is filled with shouting men. Thy slain are not slain with swords, nor are they dead of those who have died in battle. All thy princes have fled, and thy captains are tightly bound, and the mighty men in thee have fled far away. Therefore I said, Let me alone, I will weep bitterly, labor not to comfort me for the breach of the daughter of my people. For it is a day of trouble, and of destruction, and of treading down. There is perplexity sent from the Lord of hosts. They wander in the valley of Sion. They wander from the least to the greatest on the mountains. And the Elamites took their quivers, and there were men mounted on horses, and there was a gathering for battle. And it shall be that thy choice valleys shall be filled with chariots, and horsemen shall block up thy gates. And they shall uncover the gates of Judah, and they shall look in that day on the choice houses of the city, and they shall uncover the secret places of the houses of the citadel of David. And they saw that there were many, and that one had turned the water of the old pool into the city. And they had pulled down the horses of Jerusalem to fortify the wall of the city. And ye procured to yourselves water between the two walls within the ancient pool. But ye looked not to him that made it from the beginning, and regarded not him that created it. And the Lord, the Lord of hosts, called in that day for weeping, and lamentation, and baldness, and forgetting the sackcloth. But they engaged in joy and gladness, slaying calves and killing sheep, so as to eat flesh and drink wine, saying, Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. And these things are revealed in the ears of the Lord of hosts. For this sin shall not be forgiven you until ye die. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Go into the chamber to Somnus the treasurer, and say to him, Why art thou here? And what hast thou to do here, that thou hast here hewn thyself a sepulchre, and madest thyself a sepulchre on high, and hast graven for thyself a dwelling in the rock? Behold now, the Lord of hosts casts forth and will utterly destroy such a man and will take away thy robe and thy glorious crown, and will cast thee into a great and unmeasured land, and there thou shalt die, and he will bring thy fair chariot to shame, and the house of thy prince to be trodden down, and thou shalt be removed from thy stewardship and from thy place. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will call my servant Eliakim, the son of Kelsias, and I will put on him thy robe, and I will grant him thy crown with power, and I will give thy stewardship into his hands, and he shall be as a father to them that dwell in Jerusalem, and to them that dwell in Judah. And I will give him the glory of David, and he shall rule, and there shall be none to speak against him. And I will give him the key of the house of David upon his shoulder, and he shall open, and there shall be none to shut, and he shall shut, and there shall be none to open. And I will make him a ruler in a sure place, and he shall be for a glorious throne of his father's house. And every one that is glorious in the house of his father shall trust in him, from the least to the greatest, and they shall depend upon him in that day. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, The man that is fastened in a sure place shall be removed, and be taken away, and shall fall, and the glory that is upon him shall be utterly destroyed, for the Lord hath spoken it. The word concerning Tyre. Howl, ye ships of Carthage, for she has perished, and men no longer arrive from the land of the Scythians. She is led captive. To whom are the dwellers in the island become like? The merchants of Phoenicia, passing over the sea, in great waters, a generation of merchants. As when the harvest is gathered in, so are these traders with the nations. Be ashamed, O Sidon, the sea has said, Yea, the strength of the sea has said, I have not travailed, nor brought forth, nor have I brought up young men, nor reared virgins. Moreover, when it shall be heard in Egypt, sorrow shall seize them for Tyre. Depart ye to Carthage, howl ye that dwell in this island. Was not this your pride from the beginning, before she was given up? Who has devised this counsel against Tyre? Is she inferior, or has she no strength? Her merchants were the glorious princes of the earth. The Lord of hosts has purposed to bring down all the pride of the glorious ones, and to disgrace every glorious thing on the earth. Till thy land... For ships no more come out of Carthage, and thy hand prevails no more by sea. Which troubled kings, the Lord of hosts has given a command concerning Canaan, to destroy the strength thereof. And men shall say, Ye shall no longer at all continue to insult and injure the daughter of Sidon. And if thou depart to the Scythians, neither there shalt thou have rest. And if thou depart to the land of the Chaldeans, this also is laid waste by the Assyrians, for her wall is fallen. Howl, ye ships of Carthage, for your stronghold is destroyed.
It shall come to pass in that day, the tire shall be left seventy years, and the time of the king as the time of the man. And it shall come to pass, after seventy years, that tire shall be as the son of a harlot. Take a harp, go about, O city, thou harlot that hast been forgotten. Play well on the harp, sing many songs, that thou mayest be remembered. And it shall come to pass, after seventy years, that God will visit Tyre, and she shall again be restored to her primitive state, and she shall be a mark for all the kingdoms of the world on the face of the earth. And her trade and her gain shall be holiness to the Lord. It shall not be gathered for them, but for those that dwell before the Lord, even all her trade, to eat and drink and be filled, and for a covenant and memorial before the Lord. Behold, the Lord is about to lay waste the world, and will make it desolate, and will lay bare the service of it, and scatter them that dwell therein. And the people shall be as the priest, and the servant as the Lord, and the maid as the mistress. The buyer shall be as the seller, the lender as the borrower, and the debtor as his creditor. The earth shall be completely laid waste, and the earth shall be utterly spoiled, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken these things. The earth mourns, and the world is ruined. The lofty ones of the earth are mourning. And she has sinned by reason of her inhabitants, because they have transgressed the law, and changed the ordinances, even the everlasting covenant. Therefore a curse shall consume the earth, because the inhabitants thereof have sinned. Therefore the dwellers in the earth shall be poor, and few men shall be left. The wine shall mourn, the vine shall mourn, all the merry-hearted shall sigh. The mirth of timbrels has ceased, the sound of the harp has ceased, they are ashamed. They have not drunk wine. Strong drink has become bitter to them that drink it. All the city has become desolate. One shall shut his house so that none shall enter. There is a howling for the wine everywhere. All the mirth of the land has ceased. All the mirth of the land has departed. And cities shall be left desolate. And houses being left shall fall to ruin. All this shall be in the land in the midst of the nations. As if one should strip an olive tree, so shall they strip them. But when the vintage is done, these shall cry aloud, and they that are left on the land shall rejoice together in the glory of the Lord. The water of the sea shall be troubled. Therefore shall the glory of the Lord be in the isles of the sea. The name of the Lord shall be glorious. O Lord God of Israel, from the ends of the earth we have heard wonderful things, and there is hope to the godly. But they shall say, Woe to the despisers that despise the law. Fear, and a pit, and a snare are upon you that dwell on the earth. And it shall come to pass, that he that flees from the fear shall fall into the pit, and he that comes up out of the pit shall be caught by the snare. For windows have been opened in heaven, and the foundations of the earth shall be shaken. The earth shall be utterly confounded, and the earth shall be completely perplexed. It reels as a drunkard, and when oppressed with wine, and the earth shall be shaken as a storehouse of fruits. For iniquity has prevailed upon it, and it shall fall, and it shall not be able to rise. And God shall bring his hand upon the host of heaven, and upon the kings of the earth. And they shall gather the multitude thereof into prisons, and they shall shut them into a stronghold. After many generations they shall be visited, and the brick shall decay, and the wall shall fall. For the Lord shall reign from out of Zion, and out of Jerusalem, and shall be glorified before his elders. O Lord God, I will glorify thee. I will sing to thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things, even in ancient and faithful counsel. So be it. For thou hast made cities a heap, even cities made strong, that their foundation should not fall. The city of ungodly men shall not be built forever. Therefore shall the poor people bless thee, and cities of injured men shall bless thee. For thou hast been a helper to every lowly city, and a shelter to them that were disheartened by reason of poverty. Thou shalt deliver them from wicked men. Thou hast been a shelter to them that thirst, and a refreshing air to injured men. We were as faint-hearted men, thirsting in Sion, by reason of ungodly men to whom thou didst deliver us. And the Lord of hosts shall make a feast for all the nations. On this mount they shall drink gladness, they shall drink wine. They shall anoint themselves with ointment in this mountain. Impart thou all these things to the nations, for this is God's counsel upon all nations. Death has prevailed and swallowed men up, but again the Lord God has taken away every tear from every face. He has taken away the reproach of his people from all the earth, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. And in that day they shall say, Behold, our God in whom we have trusted, and he shall save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him, and we have exalted, and will rejoice in our salvation. 
God will give rest on this mountain, and the country of Moab shall be trodden down, as they tread the floor with wagons, and he shall spread forth his hands, even as he also brings down man to destroy him. And he shall bring low his pride in regard to the thing on which he has laid his hands. And he shall bring down the height of the refuge of the wall, and it shall come down even to the ground. And that day they shall sing this song in the land of Judea. Behold, a strong city, and he shall make salvation its wall and bulwark. Open ye the gates, let the nation enter that keeps righteousness and keeps truth, supporting truth and keeping peace. For on thee, O Lord, they have trusted with confidence forever. The great, the eternal God, who hast humbled and brought down them that dwell on high. Thou shalt cast down the strong cities and bring them to the ground, and the feet of the meek and lowly shall trample them. The way of the godly is made straight. The way of the godly is also prepared. For the way of the Lord is judgment. For we have hoped thy name, and on the remembrance of thee, which our soul longs for. My spirit seeks thee very early in the morning. O God, for thy commandments are a light on the earth. Learn righteousness, ye that dwell upon the earth. For the ungodly one is put down. No one who will not learn righteousness on the earth shall be able to do the truth. Let the ungodly be taken away, that he see not the glory of the Lord. O Lord, thine arm is exalted, yet they knew it not. But when they know they shall be ashamed, jealousy will seize upon an untaught nation, and no fire shall devour their adversaries. O Lord our God, give us peace, for thou hast rendered to us all things. O Lord our God, take possession of us. O Lord, we know not any other beside thee. We name thy name. But the dead shall not see life, neither shall physicians by any means raise them up. Therefore thou hast brought wrath upon them, and slain them, and hast taken away every male of them. Bring more evils upon them, O Lord. Bring more evils on the glorious ones of the earth. Lord, in affliction I remember thee. Thy chastening was to us with small affliction. And as a woman in travail draws nigh to be delivered, and cries out in her pain, so we have been to thy beloved. We have conceived, O Lord, because of thy fear, and have been in pain, and have brought forth the breath of thy salvation, which we have wrought upon the earth. We shall not fall, but all that dwell upon the land shall fall. The dead shall rise up, and they that are in the tombs shall be raised, and they that are in the earth shall rejoice. For the dew from thee is healing to them, but the land of the ungodly shall perish. Go, my people, enter into thy closets, shut thy door, hide thyself for a little season, until the anger of the Lord hath passed away. For behold, the Lord is bringing wrath from his holy place upon the dwellers of the earth. The earth also shall disclose her blood, and shall not cover her slain. The Epistle of St. Paul the Apostle to St. Titus Chapter 2 But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the age of men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God not be blasphemed. Young men likewise exhort to be sober-minded. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned. That he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters, and to please them well in all things, not answering again. Nor purloining, but showing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in all things. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee.